I've been playing Remor in Fested Kingdom because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll review, a series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled, so you can have some faith that I may know what I'm actually talking about, kind of. So, as I will say, this is an early access title, so it's kind of a bit of a cheat to say it's when the credits rolled, because they roll a bit sooner than finished games. So, first up, some basic details. Remor was released on the 31st of October 2023 for PC into early access. So, as I said, it may still undergo major changes by the time it reaches its final release. Remor was developed by Black Anchor and published by WebZen, and it took me just under six hours to complete the early access. So, what is Remor, and how has it become an infested kingdom? Well, an event has happened, a rip in the sky, and now strange creatures are roaming the lands, and have left nothing but ruin in their wake. So you play as a dour, ragtag group of survivors that are barely hanging on by taking risks for supplies and such. But are the strange creatures the only enemy out there? Or are there other things lurking in the ruined kingdom? What is currently there in this early access title, story-wise, has been fun to experience, with some interesting twists to the tale our group has been experiencing. But how does it play, I hear you cry? Well, outside of battle is where we always start, and here we have a little base where all your NPCs you save tend to become various stores <laughs> if they aren't a fighter. <laughs> so you have a blacksmith who can repair and buff your weapons, a former innkeeper that makes food that acts as a healing between missions, and you don't get to fully recover between each battle unless you've collected enough food. A scientist dude that studies the creatures and from them makes some interesting upgrades to your, your items and consumables. Another guy that can be sent out to previously cleared areas to gather materials while you're out on a mission. And a shop dude that appears to trade for, other, for items. Character progression is simple. Complete a mission and gain XP. And on leveling, you get to select a new skill from each character's personal skill tree. So other than this simple system, strength comes down to what weapon you have equipped. There are a bunch of weapons to choose from, each having their own skills and can be slightly upgraded by using the blacksmith. And each weapon choice is important, as while the weapon comes with skills, the character's personal skills can also be more or less effective depending on the weapon you've got equipped. But anyway, we're about to head into battle. We've healed, we've repaired and buffed our weapons, talk to all those that have something to say. And then before going into battle, you get to select some spare weapons and some consumables and stuff to bring into battle. The consumables come in interesting flavours, such as healing, or a weapon repair kit, but also items for pushing and pulling enemies, or even some items that have special effects that are given by the scientist dude. But beware, if you have no space left, then you might not be able to pick up new shinies as you have limited inventory. Anyway, into the battle we go, and unlike a lot of games, exploration of the map is all included as part of the battle. At its very basics, it's an I go, you go turn system. So all your guys move, then the enemy moves. During the turn, it has action point system for each character, meaning taking actions such as moving or using various skills cost action points. And to go with that, there's a second point system for attacks. But some attacks also use the action points instead of the weapon points. You can also change weapons for free. It doesn't consume any action points. Or you can use consumables, which do use a little bit of action points. So we're moving around the map, and it actually has like a pseudo stealth mechanic as the enemies have a view range and won't attack until you move into it. So theoretically, you can sneak around the map, opening chests to get and such to get materials. But when you get into the range, all hell breaks loose. The enemy that spots you releases a shout, waking up all enemies in a set range around them, and then they rush you. You basically, your movement stops at that point and the enemy all run towards you, but they don't attack just yet. You get to carry on your turn after they've moved, but they do get up in your grill. You then get to carry on your turn with the enemies in your face. So it's time to start smacking them around. If you're next to an enemy, as in face to face, tile to tile, then you're locked in place. So all you can do is attack or use some of your items. But the combat is more than just doing damage. It also includes push and pull mechanics where you can either knock enemies back or pull them towards you. This is very important for position and ensuring that you can actually manage the combats without getting hurt. Some enemies also explode if they are knocked into something else or pulled into something else. Overall, the combat is very much about management and also puzzle-like in the way 
to try and figure out who to kill in the most effective way while taking the least amount of damage possible using all you guys special skills and weapon skills to this end because if you get hurt healing isn't the easiest thing and you can end up going to the next mission at a disadvantage oh and don't forget like i said your weapons have durability so be sure to have backups so what's good aesthetically i really like the game and it has a real interesting premise especially in the concepts of exploring the map and battle it being turn-based tactics but working the exploration into that mechanic in such a way that i haven't really seen before and i'm really intrigued to see what comes later when the game is fully finished but all games have a negative in this case firstly it's not finished being an early access game and some people just don't like that and the story was just getting real interesting when it stops <laughs> on top of that sometimes it felt a bit more like a puzzle game rather than a combat game to handle some of the scenarios presented as in you needed to find the optimal solution as opposed to having several tactical solutions but that could always be because i'm a dumb dumb and i couldn't figure out other solutions <laughs> normally i'd give a critics review score but well it doesn't have one so on to my final thoughts you can tell this game is a labor of love and the developers are very active on the discord interacting in a positive manner to any feedback and such which is really good to see they're really open to talking to people and discussing what they think is good and bad and add on to that the game is actually pretty fun overall and i'm really looking forward to see where they go with it so my final rating is give it a go